Hey guys. So, thought I'd update my truck here. Did a couple videos on this thing. Um, just me fixing some stuff and whatnot. But 6.5 that is in this truck, because this is a 2000 OBS style Chevy, 6.5 and 4L AD. Uh, she's pretty worn out. She gets like half a pound of oil pressure on a hot idle. Still runs and drives strong, but it's, it's getting done with life. So, yeah, I've decided that I'm not going to put another 6.5 in it. I'm going to put 24-valve Cummins and a NV4500. There she is, boys. VP pump, VP44 pump. Not the best pump, but for what I'm doing, it's, it's whatever. Um, yeah. Putting the Dodge input shaft in here. Uh, this is a 95 transmission, and if you know anything about NV4500, is Dodge I, from 94 through forget like what 02 or whatever. They had the same uh, NV4500 as the 96 plus transmissions, except for a different output shaft and the different input shaft here. This one's out of 95, okay, so the bearing plate is a little smaller, so I had to get the Dodge one machined down so it'll fit inside there, and move the bolt holes a little bit closer, and then uh, I had to drill, I'm going to have to drill two holes down here for the Dodge belt I was going to line up. Okay, um, there's two different gears that they had uh, in like the 90, 92 through 95 years. Supposedly in 95, they were the same gear, like the same first gear as the the Cummins, trans, the Cummins version of the transmission, Dodge version of the transmission. But the early ones had a really low first gear, it was like a 631 gear, and these were like a 531, don't, I think that's what it is, I kind of forgot. But this one does have a little bit higher gear, so the Dodge input shaft works with this transmission. So, I got lucky there, got a parts truck for 400 bucks, and yanked trans out, sold the motor for 400 bucks, and here I basically have a free NV4500 NV with 92k on it. So, yeah, just working on swapping over the shaft, and putting a new uh, shifter top on it, because this one, I found out, it's cracked. I don't know what the guy did, but he cracked that, and he also cracked the pedal here. Good thing I have a brand new one just sitting, but... Uh, Rick, where is it? Right there, he cracked it. Good thing I ever knew one of a different truck I parted out, but yeah. So that transmission is going in. Well, this is going behind the Cummins, so I don't have to mess with adapters and wiring and well, yaddy yaddy yaddy. But gonna be running first gen Cummins mounts. So I got a set of those off of the Craigslist there. And then this is the, all the wiring to make it run. I only need a few of these. Most of these are for the Cummins gauges and to go to other things on the Dodge truck. But I just need power to a couple of these things. And then I'm going to thread in the GM oil pressure sens sensor right down there. And then the GM uh, te temperature sensor is going in there. Right there. So my GM gauges will work factory gauges on the cluster. Those will work. Basically this is just going to be a standalone harness and I'm going to make it so I can plug it right into the 6.5 harness. So say if we want to put this engine in a different truck you know just click right back into a 6.5 truck. Same everything is going to be GM sense, I mean, GM plugs on it. You know for the lift pump here I got a brand new one because I know these engines have lift pump issues like the 6.5s but I'm going to cut that off and uh, tie it into, uh, put a 6.5 plug on it so I can just, you know, and all the fuses and everything will be in the GM uh, fuse box, you know. So it's all going to be like work like factory. Only thing that's not going to work is the cruise control, which I'll probably figure that out one day, but for now I really just want to get it running. Um, yeah got a edge 
like 50 horse tuner or something on it so that's fun so but yeah these engines are pretty simple EC, ECM's right there behind the fuel filter and it shouldn't be too bad of a swap I'm hoping not but yeah took the flywheel off and got a machine getting a machine right now and uh yeah 5.9 24 valve Personally, I think this is the, one of the best. Honestly, this really is the best diesel engine ever made. This and the 12 valve, as far as simplicity and reliability, you know. Sure, Duramax's power strokes are fun, but expensive to fix. And from what era this came from, this is definitely the best. From, but yeah, seven threes are nice. But honestly, I just like I'm, I like Cummins. But yeah. So stock turbo for now. I want to do compound setup on it one day and whatnot. But for now, stock HX35 will do just fine. Gonna be running the Dodge downpipe off of a uh, first gen. So I have to get a different turbo flange. So turbo flange that just hooks up to downpipe right there and hook up to my four inch diamond die exhaust. And um yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping, I'm waiting on some parts, I'm going to order a couple more parts tonight, and then I'm hoping I'll have this thing together pretty soon, uh, by, hopefully by, be, by the beginning of August there. Yeah, there's the Dodge Bell housing, bolt right up to the NV4500. So, yep. GM NV4500 Dodge Bell Housing. Could be using the Dodge Mass, the Dodge Slave Cylinder out of a, uh, off of the NV5600, and then I'll use the GM Master Cylinder because those have the same bore, and it should work. If not, then I'll just put the Dodge Master on it. But since I have a brand new GM one laying around, I'll try that first and see what happens. If not, no big deal. Just modify the firewall a bit, and should be very mint. But yeah. So, to recap, for because I had a couple people are wondering, you know, you run the Dodge clutch, everything, basically everything from here back is all Dodge. Same clutch, slave cylinder, you know, pilot bushing, and pilot bearing, and um, another bearing. I forgot. There's a pilot in the crankshaft, and then there's the bearing there. I forgot the name of it, but I know what it is. It's forget but yeah bearing sits there and there's the fork there and it pushes and releases the clutch so I forget what that was called but everything's from the bell housing back is all Dodge everything from here back is all GM um, yeah yep so should be a fun swap there it is 6.5 turbo diesel <laughs> have something super reliable because I plan to go down to Texas and pull a couple trucks up and whatnot because wouldn't mind finding a clean cab for that and honestly pulling a couple of rusty trucks up here would be kind of fun but yeah so back to the truck here since I really haven't made any updates on the truck side put a bull bar on, bull bar bull guard on it a light bar and uh a visor because I love visors. It looks pretty awesome. Running the 99 plus uh, MBS Chevy HD rims. These came off in like 2003. Three Duramax my buddy had. Um, yeah, 6.5 turtle diesel. I'm gonna get a sticker made that says 5.9 Detroit because why the heck not? Interior's pretty nice. I had, I had a bench seat out of a crew cab, bench seat with full down armrest, but really was not working out because I didn't, for people to get in the back and whatnot. So I swapped that out for one out of a, this came out of a 98 GMC K1500 that I parted up. But I, yeah, sorry for the message for the dirty right now. Got that from a camping trip. Got a bazooka, base tube, or whatever my dad had, and. So I could use this, I just threw it in there, because why not? It's pretty decent, not the best, but whatever. 
put new carpet in it. And it came out of the 5-speed truck. Sorry, I realized I vacuum it, but... It came out of the 5-speed truck, so it has a hole cut in it. Um, put a new dash in this thing, too, because the other one was really faded on, on top. You know, it was looking like this. But, yeah, this one came out of a truck I had a while ago. Uh, 98k1500 it was that green one for, for whatever reason I decided I wanted a 95 dash in it I don't know why I did that but I did kind of glad I did now because I have this pristine dash just like new running a pioneer radio forget what it was because I got I bought a buddy's Sunfire basically just for this brand new radio and kind of just slipped it but I just wanted it for the radio Crank windows, manual locks. Used to be orange. Yeah, kind of an uncommon truck because they only made regular, they only made extended cab short bed trucks with eight lugs, not six lugs, eight lugs from 96 through 2000. And from 95 to 88, they didn't make any eight lug extended cab short bed trucks, only 1500. Extended cab, short bed trucks. Yeah, there's the old grill that's gonna get pulled. Basically, part it out because it has new heads and new turbo. Let's see what I can do with this intake. Hopefully, I should be able to make it fit for boot and whatnot. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I did put some money into this engine, but. I had, I was going to put a 6.5 back in it, but I had, I tried three different engines. Um, pulled the pans and they're old junk, cracked mains. So, I pretty much just scrapped the idea and said, what the heck. And then, well basically I pulled the pan off of one engine and I found a bunch of shavings in it. I got kind of, kind of upset and just decided I'm done for today. Walked inside and found the... 24 valve Cummins for a steal of a deal out of a 99 uh, Cummins that was totaled. Dodge that was totaled. It was T-boned and the frame was bent and that came out of a 5-speed truck so doesn't have any wiring for the automatic and whatnot. I paid 1300 bucks for that, for that engine and in this box it came up. This is everything I stripped off the Cummins. The whole Dodge wiring harness, like the whole truck harness, hydro boost. Um, there's the cruise control. There's the PCM. I think, yeah. yeah. Which I don't need that. That just runs gauges and stuff on the Dodge. Basically, I could actually get it running on the floor there, just power to a couple things, and she's running. But yeah, I'm still. Uh, I also came with a radiator. The intercooler and the radiator. I might run the 6.5 radiator. I'm not sure yet. If the Dodge one fits good, then I'll run the Dodge one just for... Because it's just simpler that way. Don't have to mess with coolant hoses or whatnot. But we'll see how it fits. Um, it's pretty gross, so I'll probably pressure wash it and whatnot. But if it fits good... You know, I know I'm going to have to do trimming to make everything fit. But if I don't have to do major, major cutting and welding, you know, then use it but I should be able to use it if not 651 will work just fine um, I'll have to relocate the AC condenser I'll have to put the intercooler in between the AC condenser and the radiator yeah it'll be a tight fit but we'll make it work I guess huh should be an interesting build I'm really looking forward to it I don't know why, but I love extended cab short bed trucks. It just looks so cool to me, especially with the HD rooms on them. It's just the simplest thing, but it makes me happy. Yeah, but it's going to be a pretty awesome truck when it's done. I really cannot wait. And for drive shafts, because I have to move the whole engine and transmission back like three, four inches, um, I got a drive shaft out of that regular cab long bed truck that I pulled pulled that transmission out of um, right here and this is like four inches shorter no no not four inches uh, like 
seven inches shorter or so than the one that's in my truck. So I'll see how that fits. If not, I'll get the aluminum one sh shortened down a bit. But once I get the transmission in, we'll see what's up with drive shafts. I'll probably be okay with the stock front drive shaft. But again, we'll have to see. Well, might as well show you guys the the truck I parted out to get that NV4500 out of. Here it is, here's what's left of it. It was a whole truck. 350, 95, 92k on the clock. Um, she was pretty, pretty crusty. That's the guy's power window conversion. And, yeah. This poor truck was definitely abused. It was all dented up. There wasn't a straight body panel on this thing. Everything was rotted. I basically ripped the front fenders off. And uh, I ripped the core support off, basically. Just bends right down there. and I'm kind of unbolted the cab. I really didn't have to touch anything. It basically just fell apart. And I just, I basically just, I lifted it off of there. I just grabbed the rocker and flipped it over by myself. And got the cherry picker, pulled the engine and transmission out all in one. Had a 350. Like I said before, sold that for 400 bucks. So I basically got a free frame box kind of a cab and an NV4500 drove around the yard shifted great beating it around using it as a you know a beater truck until I blew a brake line because they were like they're done got all the way up to the top of the driveway and uh, blew a brake line and started flying back and yeah there was a brake line but yeah got up to the driveway blew a brake line so I put it in fifth gear and I stalled it out and just used the, just used the clutch as a brake basically because the clutch was already junk. It wasn't releasing properly, um, and I'm not using that clutch anyways. So I just yeah that three the three fifty out of this thing ended up going in a boat. So that's pretty interesting. But yeah. I'll be sure to do some update videos and whatnot, and I'm gonna do a couple more videos on how to make the NV4500, the GM NV4500 work beyond a Cummins. So, yeah, should be pretty simple. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's nice. This truck was a daily driver. Yeah, believe it or not, this guy daily drove this thing. Some people, man. I turned on the headlights and everything on the dash and under the hood started smoking. It was like, yeah. It was a mess. Well, yeah. I guess we'll see you guys next one. And, and hopefully by then we'll have some more progress done. I'm hoping to start getting this thing swapped out next week. Or probably two weeks. And today is... Today is July 9th, 2019. So, yeah, we'll see. See what happens. But yeah, see you guys in the next one.